Welcome TMDDTM viewers to another episode of Things My Dad Didn't Teach Me. So today I want to share with you another custom build we did. This is a fireplace feature wall. So we met this young lady through a mutual friend. She saw a build we had done at that friend's house and then asked us if we'd be willing to build her a custom fireplace feature wall. Fast forward and here we are. After spending a number of days uh, at our house building this fireplace, we got to know each other a little bit, and so now we actually consider her to be a friend as well. So let's talk about the steps. First, you want to measure your space and sketch out your plan. So we went to her house, measured her space, and then asked her questions in terms of what she was looking for, and I sketched out her request right on site. Came home and then started listing out the materials we would actually need. Ran to my local home depot, and picked up these materials. So let's talk about how we build this fireplace feature. First you want to build a robust fireplace base. This is where the fireplace will sit. We followed our mapped out plan and we just started cutting things out. Every once in a while you have to make some adjustments but you know we were pretty close uh, right off the top. Make sure you label the back of your pieces as you cut them so that you don't get confused in terms of what goes where. You want to maximize your material usage. So I'm trying to actually lay out these boards in a way in which I leave very minimal waste. Try to actually save money. These boards are really expensive. Next we built the corner units and then we actually brought it in to actually install. We're going to have one on the left side as well as one on the right side. Next, we started framing in the electric fireplace that we ordered. And we like to make our frame mobile so that you can move it around to make sure you can get it to fit when you're ready to frame it in. We had to attach uh, two by fours to the existing studs because we're gonna mount the television on top of the fireplace and it's gonna protrude off that wall. One of the things we ran into was we started getting really bad cuts. So I needed to replace the blade. So you can see what a poor blade looks like or the impact on the material when you're using poor blade. We replaced the blade and now you can actually see how clean the new cuts are. So in another video, I'll show you how to actually change blades out of your uh, sauces. Now we're creating the kickboards. We've installed the cabinet base here. This is what your cabinets will sit on. Then we installed the cabinets. I had to actually add wall spacers and bookshelves. It's not always required. But because of the way her baseboards were set into the ground, I had to actually make spacing so that I didn't have to pull the baseboards up and expose the floor. And that's just an old carpenter's trick I was taught when working for a construction company one summer. So here you'll notice that we've actually uh, built the top portion of the bookshelf here. This is just going to be a lift and install. So we built this outside so we can carry it into the house, lift it up, put it on top of the cabinet as you can see here. Then you just secure it directly to the studs in the wall. Now we're beginning to frame the actual fireplace. As you can see, this is all starting to come together. So now we actually extended the stud wall system here for the television that we mounted to. This is why I had to put those additional studs on the back wall to, to secure this to the existing stud wall system so that I can tie this in now. Next, we installed the second cabinet shelf above the cabinets here. Then we attach the TV wall face so that this is where the television will be mounted. We have the studs behind it so we'll be able to actually drill into those studs. We begin drilling the shelf pin holes here next. Now we're starting to actually add the wainscoting boxes. Now we're prepared to add the crown molding. We framed out the top that we want to attach the crown molding to. We made sure that we took our wall angles. We measured that. Then we calculated our miter and bevel angles. So in a previous video, as some of you know, uh, I typically thank the people that taught me how to do this. I was thanking my high school math teachers for teaching us how to actually determine what these angle cuts should be. Someone had made a comment that, hey, uh, smart guy, you don't have to actually do that. 
you can actually now just actually buy an angle finder and use an app and it'll tell you what those cuts should actually be. So I looked into it and it was a good recommendation because it actually sped up the time to actually do the job. Here's what that tool looks like. This is an angle finder. And what it'll do is it'll allow me to send my Bluetooth, by Bluetooth, the actual angle I get and then it will tell me what the recommended cuts are for both the uh, miter angle as well as the bevel angle. And so it makes cutting the crown molding much easier. So something worth looking into. So as you can see, this is progressing. It's, it's turning out very beautiful. And it's amazing what we're going to make this look like once we actually start adding the uh, ledger stone to it. So here you can see we're adding the ledger stone. And it went from a, a clean, elegant look to more of an upscale, elegant look. You can notice here I created the fireplace ledge starting to calculate the boxes above the fireplace. And again, you can do these design patterns any way you want. And we're just framing this in, putting the wainscoting boxes on. And guys, we're pretty close to done here. Now it's just time to start creating the shelves. So here I am at home, my wife and I, we've cut the pieces uh, for the shelving. And we're just cleaning it up so that we can put the uh, strips on to give the the shelves a clean edge look. And this is a pretty cool little piece of um, uh, material here. All you do is you cut it down to size, you take an iron, and uh, you, you put aluminum foil above it, and you're just going to iron this on. There's an adhesive on it that's heat activated. And so it's going to give you a clean face. And you're going to cut the excess off here. Once we complete this, we're going to paint this and um, let it sit overnight, and then we're going to be ready to actually install these. Now it's time to do the final touch-up pieces on the fireplace. We're going to caulk it and paint it. This is where my wife comes in. She does a fantastic job. But I mean, for those of you that may follow her YouTube channel, Miriam's Manor, you've, you've seen some of her handiwork on her projects as well. All right, guys. So, hey, we got a custom job that's completed here. Hope you like it. If so, please be sure to subscribe, hit the like button, hit the notification bell because we'll continue to put these out and hopefully you'll be inspired by some of these projects that we're continuing to create. And again, you know, many of you know that I spent summers building houses with my uncle, so he taught me all these trades and it's something I'm very thankful for today. And I'm building these things for friends. So I'm no longer in the construction business and building houses, but this is just a hobby that I love doing. And as you can see, it can change a house. This house is absolutely gorgeous, even before this fireplace was installed. But now when you walk in, it's kind of a breathtaking moment. You walk into that door, you look to your left, and this is what you see. It's a game changer. So this is something that I recommend you guys attempt to do on your own. Be inspired to do it. These things can be really expensive, but in terms of total material cost, we spent anywhere between $1,500 to $1,700 in material cost, and that includes the fireplace. So if you're willing to take the chance and you're willing to bet on yourself, guys, by all means, save the money. You'd probably get a quote somewhere between, depending on the company you call, somewhere between eight dollars to $15,000 to have somebody come and do a custom uh, insert wall build fireplace uh, this way. So this is what it looked like before. This is what it looks like now. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Thank you for joining me for another episode of Things My Dad Didn't Teach Me. Be sure to like, subscribe, and click the notification bell so that you can get the latest episodes of Things My Dad Didn't Teach Me. God bless.